I've been telling you, the Quran gives its own falsification test that once you apply it, if it doesn't fulfill this criteria, you can reject it because you yeah, know it cannot exactly. be from God. Exactly. But if you cannot falsify it, like with this test, and it still stands, then you really seriously have to consider how so. Because only God can make or produce or reveal a book like it. I'll give you two references. It has to come from nothing, therefore there has to be a God that would create something. Because the God is beyond human logic and the natural No, not beyond so human logic. No, what sorry, we say beyond, is it... Uh, like, if it believes. Beyond, beyond what is natural, right? Yeah, beyond so, that's natural, yeah, correct. Yeah, beyond what correct, is natural, correct, so correct. therefore does not need a creator itself. And then we'll go into the whole debate of, well, that goes beyond human logic. And if you've developed this being that goes beyond human logic... Infinite regress, then, yeah, yeah. Yes, exactly. And I think that's where our views almost come to a stalemate, which is, for, for you, that the logical conclusion of that is enough. And for me, that's where I look at scientific knowledge yeah. and I say that hasn't been proven. I will endorse what I'm able to uh -huh. know beyond all reason, but beyond reasonable doubt um, and therefore and I guess for me it's also not a necessity to have yeah, a, de a deity which is an entirely different conversation. Okay that's an entirely right? different conversation entirely don't different worry conversation. we're just trying to establish if there's the creator yeah, exactly, or not. Yeah exactly. of course. But I think that's where yeah. I, I draw the line at the Big Bang and you would draw the line at a deity beyond um, yeah. Yeah, be beyond that natural world. So I okay I see what you mean but yeah. okay what I'm trying to say here I can understand where you're coming from, right? What I'm trying to say is that we have to come to conclusion where the universe, like how, the, not how the universe came to existence. That's not the question. The question is, you know, the origin of the universe. Yeah, the origin of the universe itself, right? That's that is the question that every human being asks themselves. Where did the universe come from? In fact, there was a study that's been done by an Oxford professor. His name is Professor Justin Barrett. He conducted a study where uh, a group of kids from two to three years old, from a non-religious parents, by the way, from non-religious parents, they came to conclusion that everything around them must have a purpose. So the, the trees, the mountains, the rivers, right? So they say that, look, if the rivers and the, and the, and the, and the mountains and, and trees have a purpose, what about us? We must have a purpose as well. And by the time they reach the age of four, they come to conclusion there must be higher power. Whether that's God, whether that's Allah, whether that's Jews, it doesn't matter. But what they what they do acknowledge is that there must be a higher power, right? And this is from what we call the natural inclination, the fitrah. The natural inclination, which is that it has been blueprinted in your heart to recognize that everything here must be the creator. You know for sure. There must, there's one thing that you know for sure, that you didn't create the universe, correct? Correct. Okay, you didn't create the universe. You know that something cannot come from nothing. You know that. So what's the logical, what's left? But if, some, if, you, if, human, if human reasoning and human understanding says yes. that something cannot come from nothing, yes. then why is it that human reasoning can create something that goes beyond the natural Because world? we're trying to explain the explanation of the natural world. We're not explaining the, we're not explaining the origin of okay. the metaphysical reality that we're talking about. But we're talking about the origin of the natural world. And I'm you, aren't, aren't you kind of making a, like, isn't that kind of a circle you're building there? Because, I mean, you're, you're asking a, a question in a scientific way. You're asking where does the visible universe that we can experience come from no i'm not using scientific i'm just saying that you but know that, yeah 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 i get that i get that you say like where's where does anything come from basically it, anything that you experience that you see yeah yeah sure yeah. and you that is a that is a like you you're saying like uh, we can't we, like what what was the origin of the big bang you're asking like there was there was nothing before you think but no, I wasn't saying there was nothing before. What I'm asking you, if you if you don't entertain the existence of the Creator, yeah. then what's the solution? Again, it's li it's not necessarily for. I mean, for, this is for me personally. Not for us, is Why is that not important for you? It is important for me. Yeah. But, but again, it's something that I know. I know you're saying that the scientific tool is flawed, but I think it's the best tool we have because it, by standard, scientific science uses human logic and human perceptions but even as a, science as a, as a foundation but even right? science even science you have to use rationality yeah. to a certain extent you know why because he, you, you mentioned about the big bang theory correct mm -hmm. now how did how did the scientists come to come to conclusion about the big bang right you know the the red shift correct edwin hubble yeah, with his, yeah, yeah. he saw that the galaxy receded from each other did you see singularity you didn't see the singularity so you put an element of faith even in scientific tool, you put element of faith. You didn't see the singularity, but from your from your rational reasoning, you say, well, if the galaxies are, are, are receding from each other, then at one point there must be singularity. I think I have faith in the scientific 
practice right. because I know that science will change its view when proven wrong. Okay, but is science the only avenue to knowledge? No. <laughs> I would argue no. I would argue no. You're all the right person I, to speak I, I to, Kate. I, I did not waste 30 grand in, yeah. in four years of my life. <laughs> That's what I would Correct. Say. So, Where you know about the philosophy of science, science uh, scientific realism, scientific instrumentalism. You're, 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 you're familiar with that? I did one module on it. One module on that. Yeah, so, you, so, you know what scientific realism is and sci scientific instrumentalism, right? So, scientific realism meaning that your reality is only based on science. That's your objective reality. Scientific instrumentalism meaning you're utilizing the scientific theories and predictions, but you're agnostic about it. So you don't put faith to it. So which one do you which again, one do you subscribe? Again, and this is what I, so I didn't catch the name of. Uh, oh, Nazmo, Nazmo. Nazmo. Yeah. Uh, this is what we said originally. Is where like agnostic is like a very like if you want to be very semantic, like you, if you want to get to the like to the absolute crux of it, it's like, I think therefore I am. We cannot prove anything. How do you know you're not a jar in a vat? That you know, there's like, like technically I'm ag agnostic about being a yeah. jar in a vat. I've had experience pumped into me, right? So there's a point where you're like, yes, okay, but I'm not going to live my life by that concept. So what other principles do you lead your life other than science? You'd say maybe social? Uh, yeah, of course, like social, okay. ethical. Okay. Yeah, social, okay. ethical, like political. Okay, cool. That, I guess that would come under social and ethical. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, sure. So if you take into consideration the society and, and morality from, from people, right? Why don't you take rationality and human logic into consideration? Sorry, repeat the question. If you're taking, so you're saying that you're not only using science as your principle in life, but you're using uh, society and, and, and uh, you know, that shapes the morality into consideration. So why don't you take rationality into consideration? How can you rationally, pro how can you rationally prove to me that the universe came from nothing? It's a rational exception that I don't think we've got there yet. And personally, like again, I was I was brought up Catholic, so okay. like it's although yes, okay, like there's a difference in what our beliefs. Well, if when I was Catholic, what our beliefs would have been. Um, I think the the kind of content's very similar, right? The the principle, the key principles there, right? So God, creation, we here now. To put it very simply. Yeah, yeah. Um, and for me, I don't think that was a satisfactory enough answer. I agree but with you. Again, because of that, because of that circular argument. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So for me, that was where I was like, okay, that's where I'm going to put that down, yeah. and I'm going to look elsewhere for another Kay. reason. And I, but again, yeah. I accept that we haven't got there yet. No, Kay, I agree with you on that. Yeah. I agree with you because if we were to use our natural inclination, it doesn't make sense for this Almighty God and all-powerful God to come down as a man and die for people's sin. It doesn't make sense that. You know, you're saying it's one God, but three separate persons to one God, right? It doesn't make sense to you. What we say is, how, okay, so uh, you, you must have heard the term Allah. A lot of Muslims use the term Allah, right? We say Allah is the God, right? Right. So uh, how much do you understand uh, the concept of God in Islam? I was raised Catholic, so no. Okay, like, cool. We, we, <laughs> I, yeah, yeah, we weren't taught about other yeah. religions. Yeah, because Catholics, what they, uh, Catholicism, what they teach you is that Jesus is fully God and fully human at the same time, which it doesn't make sense. Right, because human beings are fallible, but God is supposed to be infallible. So you can't be fallible and infallible at the same time, correct? Yeah. So yeah, that's kind of the, the whole point of Christian paradox. This is where you're going to see. See, yeah. <laughs> see, see. Here, here's the thing: what you did right now, you utilize reasoning. That's what I'm saying to you. So why don't you apply the same to the universe? And I'll explain to you what we believe Allah. We believe Allah is one. There's only one Creator. He's not a man. He's not an elephant. He's not an animal. He's not a monkey. But He's one and only. Now, we believe in the Quran, which is the last and final revelation given to the last and final messenger of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. There's this one chapter in the Quran, which is called Surah Ikhlas, which is every, every Muslim here, from adult to childhood, they memorize. And it's very simple. It goes like this. I will the in the Rahim. Qul huwa Allahu Ahad. Say he is Allah, the one and indivisible. Allah who samad. Allah, the independent, the self-sufficient. Lam yalid wa lam yulad. He begets not, nor is he begotten. Wa lam yakullahu kufun ahad. There's nothing unto him. So let's break it down. Right? So you know that wherever this creator is, if the creator does exist, he must be unique in every sense from the creation, correct? Because the moment he possesses any qualities or traits of the creation, there's no longer God. For example, if God enters into his creation, he's no longer God because of creation die. God doesn't die, right? So let's break it down. The first definition is, Say he is Allah, one and indivisible. You know from the natural world, 
and from us that everything is made into components, into parts. Everything that's made of component parts are finite, they're dependable. But Almighty God says here the term Ahad. Ahad in Arabic meaning not only one, but indivisible. He cannot be divided into parts. So not in three in one, not in five in one, one and holy one. And it's not made into components, right? So this is the uniqueness. Allah who Samad, Allah, the independent, the self-sufficient, meaning that he doesn't depend upon his creation, but everything depends upon him, including us. For example, we as human beings, we cannot function without food and drink for three days. At least three, four days, if you abstain for three, four days, we're going to die. So we depend upon these things for, for our existence. Almighty God does not require to be fed. He does not require to drink. Why? Because he's self-sufficient. He doesn't need his creation, right? He's self-sufficient. He doesn't need to eat. He doesn't need to drink. Take care. He begets not nor is he begotten. In other words, that Allah does not have a lineage. God does not have a lineage. What do I mean by that? We as human beings and animal kingdom, right? We have offspring. Why do we pass the offspring? Because we want to pass them to the next generation to preserve our reputation. Almighty God, He's all powerful. He's the greatest. So there's no question of Him, you know, producing offspring and having children. And if He does have children, that means His children will resemble Him. So logically speaking, it doesn't make sense, right? And if Almighty God is born, that means He has a beginning, which what is, what is so unique from us, we're born. And then, Wallam Yakulu Kufan Ahad is so stringent that the moment you compare anything with, with Allah, this is not God. Wallam Yakulu Kufan Ahad, there's nothing like unto Him. So, this is the four line definition of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, of Almighty God that we believe in. Now, I, the, the part of the Shahada, the first testament, the declaration of faith, we say, La ilaha. There is none worthy to be, uh, there's no true deity worthy to be worshipped. Why do we negate first? Because we know that there are many people that worship false gods. For example, you came from a Catholic background, correct? So they taught you that Jesus is fully man, fully God, that because Jesus did not have a biological father, he, he, he inherited, right? That doesn't make sense to you. We don't believe in that. We believe Jesus was one of the mightiest messengers of God. He was a prophet, he was the Messiah, but we don't call him God. And we don't call Mary as the mother of God. Yeah, because this is the insult, right? So I also reject that God that you used to believe in. I'm also an atheist to a certain extent. Oh, oh, honestly, yeah? honestly I, yeah, and we're all atheists. But does that make sense to you, the, the, yeah, the concept yeah. of God in Islam? Yeah. Is there anything that, that you know, shakes, shakes your belief or because, so, yeah. Sorry, Kate, I, go ahead. I understand the concept. Uh, again, for me, like, I would still put it at the same kind of circular argument where I'm like, just because you've used human logic to say, oh, but it's beyond this. Yeah. I would say, what's your evidence that there can be something beyond you know, this? Yeah. Way? And again, if it was able to be proven to me, I'd endorse it. I'm not here to Correct. disprove the existence, and I think that's Correct. a big misconception about atheists. We're not here to kind of be, yeah. God doesn't exist. And but what, the, but what yeah. I'm trying to demonstrate to you here oh, yeah. is that the concept of God in Islam, if the Creator does exist, it makes sense to you. Whereas in Catholicism, Hinduism, they attribute God with human attributes, which doesn't make sense. Yeah. So now we need to prove whether there is a Creator or not. There's a powerful verse in the Quran. It says in chapter 30, um, uh, in, in Surah Al-Tur, chapter 52, verse 35, verse 36, it says that uh, am nahnu khalikun. The Quran mentions that were they created by nothing? Or were they the creators of themselves? Am samawati wal ard? Or did they create the heavens and the earth? But la yukunu, nay, but they are uncertain. So look at Almighty God. He wants you to comprehend. So there's three possibilities. Either the universe came from nothing, or the universe came into existence by itself, or they must be the creator. Now, logically speaking, rationally speaking, nothing doesn't even exist in the real world because nothing by definition means non-existence. How can something non-existence bring into existence? Does it make sense? Big Bang Theory doesn't argue though that nothing, nothing was there before the Big Bang. Okay, how do you know that? Because they studied physics. No, but physics only studies the physical world. How can you go beyond that? Yeah, sure, but we can, we can only, with a rational method, we can only see uh, what we, ah, we can only make assumptions. Correct. Yeah, but this is, this correct. is exactly that's where... Correct. That's what I'm saying. Use the rational is, method. Yeah, correct. but this is, exactly, this is exactly where I see, like, you're, you're talking about a lot about the, uh, the jumping off point between the rational world, how we can see it with, with, with rationality, with the scientific method, with all of that, with different schools of thought. Yeah. Um, and then you 
you kind of jump off from that to the theological point of view. Mm. And I think jumping over that, jumping, making that jump, that is exactly... No, 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 no. I, I think you misunderstood. What, 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 what Sister Kate here, she's mentioning that she came from a Catholic background. Yeah, yeah. yeah? And it didn't make sense to her. Yeah. What I'm trying to say is that I'm, I was asking you the question, how much do you know about the concept of God in Islam? Yeah. So that's the reason why I put forth a theological point of view that if there is the creator, that creator is X, Y, and Z, right? This is what I'm saying. So now what I'm doing, I'm going back to the argument whether there's the creator or not. That's what I'm doing. So I'm, I'm only clarifying what we believe to be God. We don't believe in the concept of Trinity. We don't believe in polytheistic God. We Thank believe God. in pure monotheism, the one and only true God yeah. that is unlike his creation. That's what I'm doing. But now I'm going back. Now you mentioned that we have a rational method beyond the Big Bang, correct? Yeah. yeah. But that's what I'm saying. That's, that's all I'm saying. Which, why don't you take rationality into consideration what is beyond the universe? Which you cannot use science because science, because science is the study of the natural world that you can observe. But how do you observe things before the universe, before the Big Bang? But that doesn't make sense to, for, to me to make that argument. Because why? Uh, if, you, if you're asking like, uh, to me, to me uh, the, way, the scientific method, for example, okay. um, is in a way a refined version of general rational thought. Of, it's, a, it's, a, it's a very refined process by which we kind of agree that if we follow this process, we probably come to some conclusions that are not that easily to shake. Not okay. easy, easily shaken. Um, that's pretty much all from the philosophical point of view that the, uh, that the uh, scientific method is. And, okay. Uh, so I, I don't see why you why you why you always why you always say like apply the rational method to to this concept when basically I would say scientific method is a sub is a sub subgroup. Sub, yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's, it's a sub discipline of that. Yeah. And basically arguing about something that we can't observe, arguing about something that 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 we that have we you buy. observed gravity? Indirectly, yeah, sure. No, not indirect. Have you actually seen gravity? As much as you can see anything, yeah. No, no, I'm asking you, have you seen gravity itself? The, the, the question whether you can see it or not with your own eyes comes hardly into consideration. But that's important. Because, because you are created with limited senses. Correct, that's what I'm saying. So why don't we use our limited senses to come to conclusion where did the universe come from? That's what I'm asking. It doesn't make sense. Why doesn't you, it make sense? You would argue that human rationality in a way is equivalent to a limited sense. Yeah, but if I was to ask you, if, I was to, if, if we were to be given billions of years, would you ever become a lamppost? That doesn't logically, rationally, doesn't make sense to you. Yeah, anything that doesn't make sense to you, you would not believe it. Because a belief by definition means uh, a, a, a set of propositions or statements that are considered to be true with or without evidence. So I can give you reasons why I believe that there is the creator, right? I cannot give you tangible proof of the existence of God, I can't. But what I can, what I can give you is I can give you reasons. And if it's good reasons, then that's a belief. I'm not, we as Muslims, we're not taught just to believe in God blindly. In fact, if you read the Quran, it is so intellectual. It challenges the readers. For example, the Quran mentions in chapter 4 verse H2, it says, أَفَلَا يَتَدَبُّرُونَ الْقُرْآنَ وَلَوْ كَانَ مِنْ إِنْدِ غَيْرِ لَهُ لَوْجِدْ فِي إِخْتَلَابٍ كَثِيرًا That do they not, us as people, do they not consider the Quran with care? Had it been from anyone besides God, they will find you in many contradictions. So the Quran is, is, is actually opening for you to challenge. If you don't believe this is from God, if you don't believe this from Allah, prove it wrong. The Quran is not scared. Because we believe these are the words of God. If you read other, if you read other scriptures, the Bible, the Hindu scriptures, they don't have these falsification tests. It doesn't challenge you. What they say, they put you in, down your throat. No, believe in God. But we as Muslims, we're taught, no, we can prove to you rationally the existence of God. Christianity, Hinduism, they can never ever rationally prove to you the existence of Trinity. Falsification never. Falsification is a flawed theory in the right? Because if you applied falsification to science... I'll tell you why the Quran is much more superior than falsification tests. Because there's a challenge in the Quran. Okay, so we believe that in every age, so I, I'll break it down to you. I'll break it down to you from, from, from the beginning. Sorry, yeah, yeah, please. If you need to go, then you can go. I don't want to keep you. Keep, okay. Okay. If, we're, if we're good, if we're good. Uh, okay, just let me know. Just let me know because I want to respect your time, man. No, 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 I really no, appreciate you for taking your time no, out, yeah? No, it's okay. Okay, we believe that Almighty God, by His wisdom, He sends prophets and messengers. But these prophets and messengers, they're human beings like us. They eat and drink, they get married, right? But the difference is they were given inspiration or revelation from God. So what's the tangible, so what's the proof? Because there's so many charlatans out there that say, I'm a prophet, I'm a man, right? So how can we prove to you the prophethood, right? Miracles. What is miracle? Miracle by definition means uh, things that 
uh, that is beyond the, the, the capacity of, of a human being. Yeah, anything, right? So at the time of Moses, peace be upon him, the, the, the staff uh, turned into a snake. Why is that a miracle? It's a miracle because the property of, of, of the word can never turn into a snake, right? This is a miracle. For example, at the time of Jesus, peace be upon him, it was the age of medicine. So he used to just touch the person and the, 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 the blind can see. The leprosy becomes, you know, healed. But now you ask yourself this question, but why should I believe in it? I mean, I didn't live at the time of Moses. I didn't live at the time of Jesus. So uh, why do you expect me to believe in those miracles? We say because these miracles are supposed to convince their people. So, for the, for, so for, at the time of Moses, peace be upon him, that miracle was meant to convince the Israelites. At the time of Jesus, peace be upon him, it was the same, his people. Now the Quran claims that this message is not only for the Jews or for the Arabs. It was meant for all times, us, all of us. And what is the challenge of the Quran? It's called the inimitability of the Quran, which is at the time of the Prophet, peace be upon him, in the 7th century, we lived in the age of, uh, they lived in the age of Arabic uh, literature. They pride the Arabic language, right? So for example, you know, uh, I'm pretty sure you went through university system, right? Your graduation, right? You bring your parents with your picture, right? You're very proud. At the time of the Prophet, peace be upon him, they felt proud if a person becomes a poet. So they had their own graduation ceremonies, right? Now Almighty God gives a challenge in the Quran that look, this is still the Arabic language, but now you have to try and produce a chapter like it. And the five of the greatest poets at the time of the Prophet, peace be upon him, they heard the Quran, they say this is not a poem. This is not a say, this is not a word of a soothsayer. Do you know what they had to resort to? Magic. 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 Because they have no naturalistic explanation. So this is the challenge of the Quran. And why why am I saying that the falsification test is much more stronger than scientific? Because the Quran makes the surety. The next verse. It says, I'll quote you the full verse. He mentioned chapter 2, verse 23. It says that if you are in doubt as to what we have revealed to our servant, to Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, then produce a chapter like it and call your witnesses besides God if you're speaking the truth. Look at the next verse. It says, if you cannot, <laughs> if you cannot, and you will never be able to do it, then fear the fire whose fuel is men and stones prepared for disbelievers. So look at the surety of the Quran. If this was the human, if this was if this was offered by a human being, no human being will make such a claim. And would you agree that's quite a bold claim? This is the reason why, what I invite you is the Quran is challenging you. You think this is not from God? Find a, find a single contradiction, as I mentioned to you before. Find your best Arabic speakers. Up until this day, nobody met the challenge. Nobody. And I'll tell you why. If I was to ask you this building, you know, you know that every brick is touching each other, right? If I was to ask you, I'm able to construct a building but none of these bricks touch each other. Is that possible? It is float on top I mean, of it's floating. Is that possible? Is it possible to construct a building, but the bricks are floating each other? They're not touching each other. Is that possible? Think about it. That's not possible. Well, you want to lay stuff? Is that possible? Yeah, if you want to, you go for it. Is that possible? Yeah, you actually can. Good. How? Superconductors, for example. Well, you can construct a building. I'm asking construction. If you were able to put infinite amounts of power into it, yeah? No, you're saying, you're saying hypothetical. Yeah, you're Speculation. No, this is speculation. Nobody has done it because it would be stupid and expensive. Well, right now, <laughs> yeah. uh, hang on, hang on. But right now, you can't say that because nobody has done it. So now, so and this is the problem with science. I'm not against science, by the way. Yeah, we as Muslims, we embrace science, but we put it to proper perspective. Yeah, we put it to proper perspective. Yeah, we're scientific instrumentalists, meaning that we, we do entertain theories and predictions. However, however, we put it into, into proper perspective. Now, let's go back. So it's not possible for the, for the building to be constructed when the bricks are not touching each other, it's floating. Now, this is the Arabic language. The Quran is mentioned. This is still Arabic Quran. Allah is saying, God is saying, I'm using your language. You try and produce a single chapter like it. Not a single Arab poet, not a single Arab up until this day able to meet the challenge. This is eternal challenge. So we have the science to say okay. that that building could be constructed. It just hasn't yet. Okay, fine. My, okay, fine. My, my analogy is flawed, but it doesn't, it doesn't make my argument about the challenge of the Quran flawed. Okay, that's, you see what I mean? I'm just trying to like, I envision you. 
yeah? I understand. Trying to understand make you appreciate. Yeah, okay. Right. Yeah. And this is the challenge that the Quran is making. This is the challenge. And, and, and I'll give you one example. Um, his name is uh, Professor... What's his name again? Professor Raymond Farin. Professor Raymond Farin, he's a professor in Kuwait University, right? American University in Kuwait. And he uh, learned the Arabic language. And then one of his colleagues asked him, look, there's a challenge in the Quran that, you know, if somebody's able to produce a single chapter like the Quran, you falsified it. He's like, really? He's like, yeah. So he mastered the Arabic language. And do you know what his conclusion was? He says that the Quran is so complex, it's so beyond the human understanding, there can only be one conclusion, it must come from God. And he accepted Islam. So I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not giving an example from an Arabic speaker, I'm talking about someone who's a white American, who doesn't even know Arabic as a language before, he learned the Arabic language, he appreciated the challenge of the Quran, and he accepted Islam, he said, I can't meet the challenge. I got another one, Dr. McBride. Many, many intellectual people, they tried to take up the challenge, they couldn't. I'm not, so bear with me, English is not my first language, so I'm not... I'm not What's the name, sorry? Huh? What's the name again, sorry? Lucas. Lucas, that's... Uh, not quite 100% sure I got you right. But okay. You're saying, um, if I got you right, just correct me if I'm not, that uh, basically the Quran is um, like this building that you, that you, that you talked about. Uh, it is basically a set of... Um, Building blocks. Yeah. If you if you would if you were able to prove one of them wrong, you would be able to to take down the whole thing. Yes. Yes. That's possible. it. That's okay. it. That's it. Okay. So what? Okay. So let me let me explain. In the Arabic language, you have something called al-bihar. Al-bihar means there are sixteen different genres. Sixteen different genres. When the Quran was revealed, the, the none of these fall in that category. It's a different category. So do you know what? That's the reason why if you speak to any Arab, whether they're Arab Christians, Arab Muslims, right? They separate between the Quranic language and the Arabic language, even though it's still Arabic, but they call it Fusha, classical Arabic. Do you understand? So they say that, look, it's still Arabic, but it's not Arabic at the same time. How's that possible? So even modern, modern Arabs, they struggle to understand the Quran because it's completely different. Like what, what I meant to understand the Quran, meaning that it's still Arabic, but it's not Arabic at the same time. Okay. And this may well be coming from someone who hasn't studied the Quran in the same way, right? Yeah, yeah. You know, I haven't had that background. You could argue, potentially, that there is a study, theology is a study for a reason, right? Okay. You could argue that Christians would say the same about the Bible. Okay. They would say, we don't understand the contradictions within it. And look, I know, you know, you know I know that. Yeah, 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 yeah. No problem, okay. No problem. <laughs> So they're saying we can't understand them, so we spend like, our entire lives academically trying to understand the Bible. Where would you put that? Okay. Uh, yeah, where would you put, obviously, obviously you don't know what you said, but where First of all, yeah, no, good question, yeah. Kate, good question. See, I've studied the Bible. Okay. I've read the Bible three times. Mm -hmm. I went through the Christian school system from primary school to secondary school, so okay. I, I, was, I was compelled to read the Bible, right? Yeah. yeah? yeah. You'll find one thing, there's not a single verse in the Bible itself that claims this is from God. Not a single. So first of all, it has to make the claim. Is this from God or not? For example, I know it's a very silly example. Uh, you know Harry Potter book, the author J.K. Rowling, right? Yeah. Is Harry Potter the word of God? Why? Why is it not? Okay, and did J.K. Rowling, did she claim it's from God? No. She didn't, uh, because we know that the author is J.K. Rowling. And it never makes the claim itself that she's getting words from God, right? So first of all, the, the book has to make the claim that this is from God. And you'll find numerous verses in the Quran. The Quran mentions, Tanzilu mi Rabbil Alameen. This is a revelation from the Lord of the world. This is the book in which there is no doubt in it. It is a guidance for, uh, for those who are conscious of God. Yeah? The Quran mentions many places in Surah Ibrahim, chapter 14, verse 52. In Surah Ibrahim, chapter 14, verse 1. I'm giving you references because I'm not pulling up a fast one. I'm not making stuff up. You can check. These are all claims, the Quran making the claim. These are not from the words of Muhammad. We don't say the Quran are the words from Muhammad. These are the words from God. And the teachings of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, you find in a, in a documentation called Hadith literature. You find the saints. So all I'm inviting you is, now it's worth to read the Quran now, because now the Quran is giving you a challenge. You can find a single contradiction, you falsify it. If you know someone who met the challenge of the Quran, you falsify it. But, I mean, first of all, 
many Christian confessions don't claim that the Bible was written by God. Exactly. Many, many Christian confessions are like, yeah, I mean, the Bible is, is it's a central piece of our religion, okay? Yeah. But we don't claim that it was written by God, and that's okay. That's we we can we we have different different uh, venues of, of faith. We have okay. different we have different ways to approach this. Topic. Okay. So so yeah. why? Okay. Sorry, sir. Um, so, but to to me, you're you're now like if, you, if we if we take this in into consideration with what you said before. Yes. With uh, what you said with the um, with this building that you that you were talking about. So now you say you've got you've got the you've got the thesis there that. Um, says like this book was written or well, was in some way authored by God correct was, or divine spirit or whatever Div yeah from so, God yeah yeah um, but uh, I could construct such a book no there's an objective there's an objective criteria like I remember I told you the Al-Bihar there's 16 different genres in the Arabic la in, in the Arabic yeah. language and the Quran falls none of these 16 is completely different genre so all the Quran all the challenge is telling you is produce a chapter like it that's it, and nobody can make it. See, yeah, it's objective. See, see, the Quran is not challenging. Bring something more beautiful, aesthetics wide, because that's subjective. The Quran is telling you to meet the objective criteria. Yeah, okay, but but still, that, that to me doesn't. I'm sorry, but that doesn't prove anything. No, no, you missed the you missed the next verse. It says the Quran makes the claim you will never be able to do it. Yeah. Okay. Which okay. human being ever makes the claim like that? If I was still like Usain Bolt, for example, he says, I'm the fastest man in the world. Would he ever say, no one will meet the challenge? Never. Why? Because it's relative. Still, it doesn't, doesn't, doesn't... I think... I can't really explain it. Not so you God. know that God. bottle that he's got in his hand? Yeah. Just imagine he makes the claim. You cannot make a bottle like this exactly like it. Yeah. Similar to it. Or similar to it. Yeah. But and wait, you bring a bottle, similar. <laughs> how, can he, how can he make a claim like that? Because you think like, why is it impossible? But the way he's, the Quranic challenge is something that, is, is if you appreciate the nature of the challenge, you'll realize only when you know the objective nature of the challenge. And he's better explaining than me. So. Yeah. Because when it comes to prose and poetry and any literature, any genre of you know linguistics, it doesn't make sense to us to think that how, why is it not imitable? We can imitate mm. it. We can imitate Shakespeare. We can imitate you know Homer. We can anyone. That's how human beings think because this is just composition. Yeah. You know, there might be someone out there bright enough, clever enough, intelligent enough to make imitations of things. Okay, so if you have Beethoven with this, you know, very mm. in interesting symphony, you can get someone imitating this. It's not a problem. That's what how we think. Correct. But the Quran is in a particular linguistic genre, and yet it came with a particular composition that, on the surface level, you think it's possible. But when you look at the objective mm. challenge, then when you find out that you cannot. Only when you scrutinize it, only when you scrutinize it closely oh. enough, then you realize it that you can't match it, that you can't actually bring something like it because it becomes something, you know, nonsensical. It doesn't make a meaningful sentence. So when you have a, a composition, a, a particular structure of, of a sentence, if I'm speaking to you now, so far, I hope that I haven't made any grammatical mistakes mm. in the English language. But if I, if I you know, I um, said something like this, in such a way that you realize oh, I'm making grammatical mistakes, I'm mm. not speaking English anymore. Then you will say it's not making much sense. Gradually and gradually you can start speaking gibberish. And I can't speak gibberish. I can't speak gibberish. Did I speak English to you? You immediately think like this gibberish. didn't sound like English. It sounded like what? I don't know. I, I was just making gibberish statements. So if I made a gibberish statement like that and I said that was English and make it imitated, would you be able to? Because you didn't even know how what 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 is you imitating. So the Quran came in Arabic language, meaningful, eloquent, beautiful, all of that. Yet the structure and the composition is such that it is not possible. So that's why if you have given the example of a building, yeah, yeah, uh -huh. well, to, to appreciate that, so that this is one example because I think it hits the point, you know, you know, when you and it makes sense. Imagine this fence, right? We've got this fence. See how solid it is. And imagine I told you all of this fence, you see. This is like, you know, I, my hand goes through. But actually it's solid, but it's transparent, whatever the word you want to use. Yeah. And if I said bring something like it, and yet like he's kneeling on it, and yet yeah. my hand just goes through it, like if I did that. You won't be able to bring something like it. You won't be able to, because you know that this structure, this material that is now, looks transparent, yeah. and it just, you know, 
what's the word? Like it goes through it, and yet he's kneeling on it. You can put something like that. You know, like the invisibility cloak, like Harry Potter. Yeah. So. <laughs> If you yeah. knew the reality of that by close observation, you would know that you cannot meet it. Yeah. You cannot imitate something. You can't manifest something like that. Yeah. Quran, unfortunately for the people who don't believe, is of such a nature that it presents to them an obstacle of an intellectual challenge. And that's why the Quran actually challenges people. In fact, this is called the tahaddi, the challenge mm. of the Quran. Tahaddi. If you are in doubt, then produce something like it, whole book like it, ten chapters like it, or one chapter like it. The Quran gives you all of these. How so? For all of these years, people studying Arabic language at Soas, they are. Harvard, yes, they are. In all the major universities in the world where there are Arabic language being studied, right. why aren't those professors of Arabic language who are not Muslims? Right. Say, okay, let me make a small composition like three lines, the smallest chapter of the Quran. Ten words only. Why are they unable? I was going to say, we're going to have to leave in a minute. But I'm yeah. going to have one last question just for this is like a yeah. genuine uh, interest yeah, yeah. in like, so this the history is, of Islam. Sure, and, sure. So, question, please, should, please do. I, but the I, point, point on this, I'm just going to summarize that. Oh, yeah, I, this is a what we call a falsification test for the Quran. Like he's been telling you, the Quran gives his own falsification test that once you apply it, if it doesn't fulfill this criteria, you can reject it because you yeah, know it cannot exactly. be from God. Exactly. But if you cannot falsify it, like with this test, and it still stands, then you really seriously have to consider how so. Because only God can make or produce or reveal a book like it. I'll give you two references, even from non-Arabic speakers, when they master the Arabic language. Like, for example, you have Professor Raymond Farron, you have Dr. McBride, they appreciate the challenge, and they had have, they have to resort by to say this is divine revelation. As a genuine interest in like the, uh, the history no problem. of Islam, where do you believe that like the fir people first found the, the Quran? Where was the first instance of people coming? coming he's to, he's he's, he's better fit to answer your yeah, question. Yeah, of course. <laughs> You, know, you need to elaborate your question a bit further. Because in our belief, maybe when I explain our, what we believe, it, it may answer your question. So we believe that 40 years of, so of his life of the Prophet Muhammad, Allah of course, he did not receive any divine revelation. Okay. He was someone who was called Hanif, in a way, someone who has the natural inclination already to believe in a, a super being, almighty, be upright, and not to worship idols and so on and so forth. Okay? But uh, at the age of 40, God revealed through an angel, a medium, this revelation. So when he was 40 years old, this is he received. About five or so verses, first verses, in, in, in um, the surah. Iqra' bismi rabbika ladhi khalaq. This is how you start. Read in the name of your Lord who created. Re read in the name of your Lord who created. This is the first revelation of the Quran. Not believe, but recite, recite proclaim, read. read. That makes a difference between every other religion about yeah. faith in Islam is about how we come to believe by studying, reading, reflecting, acquiring knowledge. So then the story goes like he went, you know, down from the mountain because he was in a cave contemplating and he was with his wife and saying, cover me up because he was shaking of this experience. Mm. So with this encounter, this was the first revelation. Eventually, you know, he was getting more and more revelation and then Angel Gabriel who revealed the Quran to him was com explaining to him and con comforting him and saying he is the, me the messenger of revelation, the angel revealing to him and then the Prophet started getting scribes to write him down because he did not know how to read and write. So historically speaking, the Quran got written down during the presence of the Prophet by professional scribes and they were memorizing it. Mm. Yeah? So you have two forms of uh, transmission of the text. One is by graphic form, written form, and one is by preservation through the heart, through the memory. So that continued, and we can now direct you to manuscripts of the Quran in museums, in libraries, in private hands, where are they within the first century of Islam. More than 90, uh, I don't know, almost, you know, numbers going, two, three, four, five percent, like this numbers increasing, of the whole of the text of the Quran, we have percentage-wise from the first hundred years of Islam, hmm. compared to some other religious texts which you have zero percent. Like the yeah. Bible, for example. That yeah, if you want to name that. Yeah. There's nothing within the first century of yeah. Christ in terms of revelation. But we have now the, this Quranic text 
obtained from manuscripts around the world and so on. Birmingham manuscript, uh, only a few pages, very early from the first century of Islam. You know, in UK, we, we have in UK, can you believe yeah, that? Exactly. Birmingham um, Library. So, Birmingham textual Library. transmission has a robust history where we can be sure that it, it hasn't undergone some corruption and like. Because if you want to know whether this is indeed the pure, unadulterated divine revelation, you have to have some element of knowledge about historical transmission. Correct. And you can see that Ramadan just being only how many days ago? Two weeks. Two weeks, two two weeks, weeks. ago. Two weeks. In this month of Ramadan, all around the world, Already? the whole Quran was being recited from beginning to end, cover to cover, word for word, letter for letter, sound for sound, vowel for vowel, by someone from memory. Yeah. All of it, throughout the Masajid's mosque around the world, hundreds and thousands, if not, you know, so many. Um, and the Quran is, this is the way how it's been preserved. So that you can be at least sure that the Quran, that if we were to offer you one, you know that, okay, I'm pretty much sure that's what the prophet who claimed to be a prophet of God, yeah. that is what he left behind. Yeah. Okay, okay that's a great answer. Yeah. And thank you very much. And thank you very much. For no problem. No, it's a pleasure speaking to both of you. Thank if you. I offended you, I apologize. Anything. What are your names? <laughs> What are your names? Names. Oh, Lu Lucas. Luca? Luca. Kate. 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 Very pleasure speaking to you. Pleasure speaking to you guys. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. So, so if we have somehow given you an introduction to Islam and to the Quran, so we hope you take this forward. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks very much. Have Thanks. Have a good day. Take care. Thank you.